are you done? <laughs> I got one more minute. I guess I should play one more thing, right? Yeah, let me get a drink. <laughs> We are so fearful here. <laughs> so, good morning and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Rick Roberts. For those that are worshiping online, uh, glad that you took time out of your schedules to be with us on this wonderful Lord's Day. I have a few announcements. First, for our visitors. Ah, we have something brand new for the second time, actually. Um, we've got some visitor bags. We have Cindy and Bill from Illinois, and I don't know, Kim, friends with y'all. <laughs> so any other visitors? Good. Uh, again, thanks for, for being here. Um, everything's in the bulletin that you were given, but also everything is on the screen. Uh, you, everybody was given a little slip of paper. Uh, what we're going to do with these, this is something uh, we did a couple of weeks ago in our intergenerational Sunday school about Holy Communion. And you can write your name on here. You can write a friend's name. You can write an enemy's name. <laughs> uh, a, a group of people, whatever. And during communion, uh, after you commune, we'll have a couple people on either side to help staple these to our communion chain because we're all connected. And I think that's a good way to help us to see no matter who we are, we are all whose we are, God's children, and we are all connected together. So uh, if you so choose. And if you want more than one, knock yourself out. <laughs> uh, for those that are visiting, this will be the, the last of my five-week sermon series on our Lutheran beliefs uh, using Martin Luther's small catechism. Uh, with the, that in mind, following worship, we have Sunday school here for adults, and we will be talking about God's Word as a part of our Lutheran beliefs. And is uh, the other Sunday school class meeting today? I don't see Shannon. Do you know if, if they're meeting? Maybe. Maybe. I'm teaching a little, so I won't be moving it, but Shannon probably will be here. Okay. And what is that called? I forgot. Sandwich Club. They're doing a book study where you don't have to read the book, you can still have a conversation. And that class meets right down that hall, the last door on the left. If you look in the hallway sometime this morning on this tree, um, for those that have action teams that are uh, that we like to use before the end of the year, if you will use the orange labels, those are for November, uh, for Ruminian needs and food items. Um, and next week we're going to have a picnic it's also Reformation Sunday and Compassion Sunday you've seen information about that I'll send out more information in a little bit uh, Shannon we just said that you're going to have class so we're going to have class down there great thank you very much at this time I want to call on Mr. Eddie Schmidt who would like to say a, a few words Good morning. Good morning. Uh, bear with me. I'm going to try to take a shot at this. Uh, tomorrow will be the uh, one year since Vanessa's accident. I just wanted to take a few minutes this morning and tell all of our church family here at St. John's how thankful and grateful me and my family are for everything you have done, all the acts of kindness, the prayers, the love, 
and everything that you've done are appreciated more than you can ever imagine. And although this past year has been heartbreaking, a struggle and yes, tough to navigate at times, there has been even more amounts of blessings and even uh, so many abundant and random acts of kindness. Not only from Vanessa's work family, her friends, but most of all, this wonderful church family. Just wanted to say thank you all so very much. It's really appreciated. And one last thing, if I can borrow a phrase from Sunday School, that's, there was a God sighting a few weeks ago. Uh, we closed on the sale of her house on October 1st. And uh, that morning before I went to the title company's office to sign the paperwork, I just went by her house one last time. Went in the house, talked to her, laughed, shared some stories, said a prayer, and I was, and I was walking back out, locking the door to the car, or locking the door to the house and walking back to the car. Uh, I'm sure all of y'all have heard many times, you know, if you find a penny or a coin on the ground, it's a penny from heaven. Well, as I was opening the car door to get in the car that morning, there in the driveway right by the car door was this bright, shiny penny. Uh, at that moment, I kind of felt some peace and comfort that I hadn't felt for a while. I got, a, I got in the car and drove on down the road to the title company's office to sign all the paperwork to finish up the sale of the house. And uh, I just could kind of feel Vanessa telling me, saying, Dad, you're going to be okay. Just keep moving forward and uh, help him take care of Cal. So uh, thank you all so very much. I appreciate, we appreciate everything you've done for us. You, Eddie. As we were playing golf on Friday, I used a bright, shiny penny <laughs> to mark the ball, and what an incredible story. Thank you for sharing that, Eddie, and thank you all for the way you have helped Eddie and their family. Please rise as you're able. Hold up. I have one request from someone else in the congregation. Not another yet. Announcement. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I'm really nervous. <laughs> Very formal. I guess not yet. <laughs> not yet. If you're able, please rise for confession and profession of faith. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God of hope. Uh, we need to get this screen going. There we go. Amen. People of God, do we know that we are loved, redeemed, and sanctified by God? If we do not know that gospel truth, why? Because, because of sin, we believe, or are made to believe, we are not good enough for God. People of God, no matter who you are, no matter what you believe, or are made to believe about your status with God, Hear the good news of God's love for you, for it is by grace your sins are all forgiven and forgotten. For it is by grace we are loved, saved, and redeemed forever. This is not our own doing. It is the gift from our gracious God of love, given to us, given to all people, and all means all. All people were created in Christ Jesus to know and live the truth of God's all-inclusive love, which was prepared before the foundation of the world to be our way of life. Because of Jesus' love for all, may we live to share the good news of God's grace with all people. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able for our opening hymn, and if you can, face the cross as we process them.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Gracious God, in the meal of grace, we celebrate your lavish grace upon grace gift for the world. As we remember your promise of your love, fill us with your Holy Spirit to share the body and blood of Jesus' forgiveness to bring more peace, hope, and joy into our world. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's word. Our reading from today is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the gospel reading. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You and you alone have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel today according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors <coughs> ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated and invite the children for me, please. Cyan, I like your boots. Are those glasses new? Yes. Yes. Those are really pretty. I need some pink glasses. You think that would look good? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, it's one of my favorite colors. It really is. Um, hey, uh, we're talking about Holy Communion today. Do y'all know what Holy Communion is? Do you know what Holy Communion is? It's when we come up to the table and we get some bread or a wafer and we dip it into some wine or grape juice. Do you know what that? Do you know what? Do you know what that means? Well, very good, because I'm going to ask them the same question in just about three minutes from now. <coughs> Any ideas? Why do we come to this table? Let's take a look at this table. Why do we come up here? What is the table for? Yes. To eat. To eat. And we need to eat, right? Did y'all have breakfast today? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So if half of us did and half of us didn't. Are you going to have lunch today? Probably yeah. not. Probably not. <laughs> what about dinner? Yeah. Yeah. Popcorn tonight? Yeah. Ice cream? Oh, I hope so. So a table is about a dinner, right? And we, we need food, right? Why do we need food? Wow, well, y'all just usually really talkative. So we don't die. So we don't die, okay. <laughs> Well, that's kind of the bottom line if we don't eat. Yeah. And so if we eat, it helps us to live. And Jesus gave us what, what we call Holy Communion, you know, food to help us have life. You ever feel bad? Yeah. You know, that's why Jesus, in, in Jesus in this meal, no matter what you might think about yourself or what's going on, you know, when you come to this table especially, it says God loves you so much. Because what did Jesus do for us? He died for our sins. He died for our sins. Well, you said selves, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He did. He wants us to die to ourself, you know, to live for God. He died, took away our sins so that we can have life. And that's what, when we come to this table every day, every day, well, every week, that's what we receive. The, the, the assurance, you know what that word means? That God really, 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 really loves you. And that's what we do in this meal. And that's why it's so important for this meal to just be reminded of how much God loves us. But also, as you see these things, and I hope you'll put your name. Y'all, most of y'all did this, right, already? That you can do it again if you want to, but it connects everybody together. And that's what God is doing through Jesus, is to connect us all together. Because who created us? Yeah, God and Jesus. You know, and we're you know, so we're all connected together. And again, this this communion table helps us to know how much God wants us to be connected together, to help each other. Isn't that a good idea? Yeah. <coughs> So uh, if you will, if you want to, you can do, do this again, like you did a couple, a few weeks ago. And during communion, after you commune, we'll have people to help staple, you know, more of these connected rings together, okay? Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for communion. Thank you for loving us. Help us through communion to love everybody else like Jesus did. And like he still does. And like he still does. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your hearing, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In whose name we pray. Amen. So again, for those that are visiting today and those that may not have been here for a few weeks, for the past four weeks, 
we've been on a sermon series of what we believe as Lutherans. And we began using Luther's uh, small catechism to know that the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and Holy Baptism are all about God giving us God's gift of love. Gave it in love, for love, for us to live. And today we're going to focus on the Sacrament of Holy Communion, which I believe is the epitome of God's all-inclusive love through the Word that became flesh. So, real quickly, what is your understanding of the Sacrament of Holy Communion? You could be like the kids and be quiet. It's where we share it not only with the people in this church, but every church having communion today at the same time. Absolutely. And I'm going to take that a little bit further in a couple weeks. What else? We share it with those who have gone before us. That's where we're going in two weeks today. <laughs> on All Saints Sunday. <laughs> Holy Communion is what we call the means of grace. How we receive God's love, God's forgiveness, the means of grace through Christ's sacrifice of love for us. You know, and that grace upon grace in that our sin against God for not believing in God, and believe me, all of us don't believe in God at some point in time, and all of our sins that we commit against each other have been forgiven and forgotten forever. And communion is another way that God is trying to build God's community of faith based on love. And as we know, we believe that God's grace, the table is open for who? All, All people. And we know that, I think, because of who was at that first table about 2,000 years ago when Jesus, on that Passover night, instituted what we call the Sacrament of Holy Communion. We see people we don't know a whole lot about, but we know that Peter, Andrew, James, and John were just simple fishermen. They could have been possible rabbis that were told not good enough, I'll just go fishing, you're not good for anything else. We know that there is a guy named Matthew who was a hated tax collector and he was sitting right next to a guy named Simon the Zealot who would have hated the hated tax collectors and maybe took a chance would kill him. And then the rest, you know, Nathaniel, he was sitting under a tree when Jesus found him. Uh, Philip was a facts and figures type of guy. Uh, when Jesus asked or told him, you don't feed those 5,000 people. He said, well, we only got five loaves and two fish. We have Thomas, who is called the doubter, which is just the wrong name for, Ta for Thomas, because the word for doubt in, in Greek really means unbelief. And he did not believe, as the others did not believe, until Jesus came. Um, but Thomas also is the one that said, when Jesus said, we're going to go to Jerusalem and I might die, he said, well, we'll go with you too, and if we have to die also. And then there's a guy named James, the son of Alphaeus, sometimes known James the Less, James the Little, Judas, son of Thaddeus. Don't know much about those people. And then there was, of course, Judas Iscariot, the traitor. But there was also, in that room, several women. Mary Magdalene, maybe Jesus' mom was there. The woman's, the house was owned by a woman. And so she probably would have had servants there and children because one of her children was a guy named Mark who wrote the gospel. So there was a lot of people there. How did Jesus get that widely diverse amount of people in that room? Well, he called them. He called them by name. Some of them he sought after. But each and every one of them, he welcomed and accepted them at that table. Jesus helped them to talk about their, their beliefs, about life, faith, and religion. And most importantly, Jesus helped them to talk about their differences. That differences are really good. That we need each other. We need that differences, that diverse knowledge. And how those differences are actually a strength. 
The Chosen series that we're watching on Monday night shows a wonderful depiction of how Jesus was welcoming and helping those people get together. And Jesus helped them to listen to his teachings and help them by letting them see what he was doing with his words and all that he did to bring healing to everybody, to bring hope and health and body, mind, and spirit. And Jesus knew, he absolutely knew on that night that they would not understand what he was doing in fulfilling our text from our Old Testament reading from Jeremiah 31, to put God's law within them. And what Jesus was doing and God was doing, that law within them was the word that became flesh, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus embodied the law. The law loving God and loving all people. Jesus was writing God's law of love on their hearts to know at the very core of their being that they were loved and they are accepted. Jesus was instituting at that table for everyone in the world to know God and God's love, from the least of them to the greatest. And Jesus brought that wide, diverse amount of people together as equals. And he did that by forgiving their iniquity, their wickedness, and their, the evil intentions from their hearts. By remembering their sin, again, their sin of not believing in God and not believing in Jesus as the gospel writers. That is his focus in John's gospel, is to help people to believe in Jesus. Because they didn't, because they all betrayed, denied, and deserted him when Jesus needed them the most. And Jesus also forgave all of their sins against each other and remembered them no more. I call that God's holy amnesia. Because of Jesus fulfilling God's new covenant, God's new promise to God's people, to see all people, to see his people as her beloved children who were created in God's triune image of love. I believe Jesus helped his disciples know God's unconditional and all-inclusive love the best in those incredible words, this is my body and this is my blood. God's love given and shed for you. On that night 2,000 years ago, those disciples did not and could not understand those words. They couldn't. Absolutely couldn't. However, after his death and resurrection, the risen Christ continued to come to those disciples in more meals, using those same words. But more importantly, to come to them to see those words in actions by loving and forgiving them and giving them peace in that upper room of unbelief, guilt, and fear. Jesus continued to come to them to feed them until they became what they ate. They became Christ-like and they became leaders of Jesus' church by God helping them to die to themselves, to their wills, and be raised up to new life to live God's will to be all loving, all caring, all compassionate and accepting as they always were. My friends, we live in a world that truly, I truly believe is filled with many loving and caring people doing a lot of wonderful, incredible, good things in our world. I also believe, and I think you know this too, our world, our country, is filled with way too many problems. The ever-growing gap between the rich and the poor, homelessness, hunger, addictions, violence, racism, all the isms and all the destructive divisions that those things do that are tearing us apart. 
it is very easy to point blame at our politicians for their destructive and threatening rhetoric and the fear of the unknown of what will happen from whoever wins 16 days from today. That's why you will see more about a prayer <coughs> visual service we will have Monday night before the election at 7 p.m. For me, it is also very easy to point blame for many, if not all, the divisive problems in our country and world on religion. Religion, in its very word, means to re-ligament, to realign, to bring together, to join together. Many religions, including Christianity in this white Christian nationalism movement, is doing just that to divide people. This past Wednesday morning, at Bible study, we were given the answer to all the problems in our country. Through a religious experience, we experienced the joy of what religion can and is doing to lift people up, to know they are loved, and to know that they are cared for. Gladys, thank you for sharing your story. She felt God entering her heart and lifted her up to talk about what she's going through right now. You know, with some medical things and also actively searching for a new home into an independent living place. The tears that welled up in all of us was like a flood of grace upon grace, giving us a heaven on earth moment, giving us a last day moment of peace and joy. And when you hear the words last day in the Gospels or wherever, it's not when you die. It's not when you go to heaven. The last day, it is that. The last day is also when God raises us up when something good is happening in our lives that gives us peace and joy. Gladys experienced what those first disciples experienced. Life in its truest sense. She became what she ate in the goodness of God's word of love that was given and shed for her. She was empowered by love, in love, to share love for me, for you, and her church family. Jesus said in today's gospel, quote, unless you eat my flesh and blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them, unquote. Jesus gave us those words to give us eternal life. And eternal life, again, is not, it's like that last day. It's not sometime in the future when we die or Jesus comes again. Eternal life is living the peace and the joy that God gives us right here and right now. And it is amazing what God's word can and is doing. The word Jesus became flesh to live among us, to show us and give the world God's unconditional love. The world looked at Jesus and those in that upper room and said they were not good enough. And I'm so sad to say the world and religion today still looks at way too many people in that same way. That is why the sacrament of Holy Communion is so important. Again, who did Jesus come for and invite to his most holy table? Oh. There you go. Thank you. All, all people all the not good enough, all the marginalized for whatever reasons, you know, which at times we all are. I know at times I feel definitely not good enough. There are a lot of those people outside those doors that are homeless, hungry, 
rich and poor, white, black, gay, straight, undocumented, undocumented, whatever the labels are, the hate labels. You know, but there might also be some of those right here today that are feeling that same way. We all need to hear, to see, and believe in Jesus' grace upon grace, love for all. In the words, this is my body and this is my blood. God's love given and shed for you. God has given her church what we need to help change our world, to be more compassionate, to be more loving, to be more caring, so we can be more open. And it is in that meal that we will share in just a few minutes later. That is the answer. Wouldn't it be nice to see Kamala Harris and Donald Trump sitting side by side? Maybe a whole lot of, lot of other politicians, a lot of other religious leaders, all the marginalized people, all of us reaching out our empty hands to be fed with God's love, to be fed as Gladys was, to be fed as Eddie and Callie and Robin and the family are, and countless others that I am blessed to take this holy sacrament to into their homes. You know, what I see, Gary, with your mom, with Helen Frazier, Michael yesterday, and I could name more and more. I lift up that little bread and that cup, and all I see is the focus on that gift. May God empower us to focus on and become what we eat, to be Christ-like, to invite everyone to come to Jesus' table of God's grace upon grace upon grace. Amen. Next slide.
us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And now, so with you. Please take a moment to safely share God's peace. For our visitors, we don't really pass a plate, but we have a plate at the front here, and over there, if you'd like to leave uh, an offering. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Holy One, we give thanks for all servant leaders of the church. Bless bishops, pastors, and deacons with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. God of grace. Creative one, we give thanks for the delicate balance of the natural world. Kindle in us a spirit of caring strength in the preservation of habitats, food availability, and centers of refuge, that all wildlife may thrive. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Empowering one, fill the leaders of governments with a spirit of service that prioritizes those on the margins due to job loss, underemployment, unsafe working conditions, and immigration status. May economic equity be achieved for all people. God of grace. Yes. Restoring one, send your angels to watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty with your comfort and peace. Especially those we lift up on our prayer sheet and those we lift up with our voices or in our hearts. We do lift up Michael Campbell uh, for his successful surgery. Uh, he's going to be in the hospital a few more days than expected, but doing well, and we pray for good pathology reports this week. God of grace. Amen. Abiding one, you call pastors to shepherd the congregation for faithful living as servants and followers of Jesus. Inspire all ordained ministers and seminarians to ministry that challenges, engages, and comforts those in their care. God of grace. Amen. 
saving one, we give thanks for the disciples James and John and all saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in a promised place at the feast of victory that we receive by your grace alone. God of grace, into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the saving grace you freely give, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending voices Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. May we be bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, but even more bold to live that prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven,
risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied. Come to the table where all are welcome and all be For those online, this is Christ's body and blood, God's love, given and shed for you. Uh, if you, uh, as you come to the altar for our visitors, just come down the center aisle. We use bread, but if you like a wafer instead, please, you're welcome for that. Uh, the gold chalice has wine, the clay chalice has grape juice. So come when you're ready. And after communing, I'll come down and then go out this way or that way. Uh, if you want to add to our chain, um, let's see, Mary and Katie were going to help help y'all do that. So thank you for doing that. Again, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, Paul. We is, put our names or you can people? put you can put your name. You can, as I said earlier. Well, I don't <laughs> yeah, remember I know. that. <laughs> your name or someone else's name, a politician's name, an enemy's name. <laughs> You know, because, you know, the table is open and welcome, how God connects us all together. So, I'll let y'all come in first and y'all can help. The body of Christ.
Trice, as you're able. The body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthens us this day and every day in his love and in his grace. Amen. <laughs> sacrifice we received at your table fill us with your holy spirit strengthen and empower us to share this gift of life and love with all people to bring your peace into our world amen, amen. the blessing of our trying god who loves us feeds us and journeys with us promises to be with us now and forever amen, amen. amen. Oh, 